I'm Pastor D.R. Barrio Sr., pastor of the First Zion Missionary Baptist Church. I'm also the president moderator of the Liberty Missionary Baptist and Educational Association. And we have embarked on some wonderful work, uh, not only in home mission, but we take care of foreign mission. Right now, we are in a project with Haiti. Over in Haiti, we took a trip over in Haiti just about in August of last year. We stayed over there close to a month to share with those people and discovered that there is a great need over in Haiti. Before uh, those people from that area can get to this location, uh, some people are dying because it's so far to go from one location to the next location. Uh, therefore, it gives us a greater need to do what we need to do down in the area called the Below. Um, went to a place called Bello, and uh, we want to erect a clinic over in, in Haiti. We need your help to do that. So I'm asking that you would partner with me, that you would share with me, that you would participate with me as we erect the building over in Haiti. People are dying from minor infections because they can't get to a hospital or a clinic. So right in that area, where the population is about 200,000 people, Right in that area, we need to erect a clinic, and I need you to help me. We have doctors on board um, over there in Haiti. Uh, the mayor of that city has donated us the land to do it. We just need to put it together. We over in Haiti, in a place called Below, a place where uh, we're looking at um, beginning a site for clinic and moving over into a hospital area. I'm standing with Dr. Marie Gardia Etienne. Etienne, who is the doctor over here. Her along with several other doctors are <clears throat> looking um, for us to share and putting this clinic together. Uh, the clinic is going to cost approximately um, $75,000 to get started. And once we get that started, we can move into uh, doing a hospital over to service these people. It's needed because um, the area is so far away from um, Port-au-Prince that uh, there are people on this side of Haiti that's suffering because uh, a lack of medical treatment. So it's our intention and plan to assist Dr. Uh, Marie Gardé Etienne to share in, 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 in serving the people in the below area. Uh, we have the plans growing out, but we need your financial support. So I'm asking you to support us. Any uh, support that you give us is tax deductible, and you can send uh, your donations to 7201 Olive Street, New Orleans, Louisiana, 70125. That's 7201 Olive Street, New Orleans, Louisiana, 70125. All checks made payable to the Liberty Missionary Baptist and Educational Association. Liberty MBEA. Okay, when she came here, how many years ago? Four years. Four years ago, she purchased a piece of land. So, the inhabitants of the area found out that she was a medical doctor. And people in the area found out that she was a medical doctor. And they told her that they would love to have a clinic in that area because they have been known. So, they would love to have a clinic in that area because they have been known. Donc de ce fait, comme participation communautaire, ils ont voulu bon nous terrain 
football l'autre bon hein, pour nous faire faire ça là pour nous. And they wanted to donate that field over there. I don't know if you can see it. And uh, so they can build a, a clinic there. Oui, parce que il y a environ 169 à 200 000 monde qui vivent dans l'area. There's about uh, 169,000 to 200,000 people living in that area. Et Kaiwala And the closest hospital here is about uh, 30 minutes, 25 minutes away, which is uh, Plus même, yeah. 45 à une heure de temps. Okay, she said 45 minutes to one hour. God bless you, and we're looking forward to having your support and partnering with us. It's years of ministering to the sick, the needy, and knowing the world needs the Word of God. We welcome you to the First Zion Baptist Church located at 7201 Olive Street and 2200 Jackson Avenue in New Orleans under the leadership of Pastor D.R. Barry Hill Sr. Get your Bibles and let's visit with the great folks at the First Zion Missionary Baptist Church. Good morning. I'm First Lady Susan C. Berry here of the First Zion Missionary Baptist Church. I'm glad that you've taken this time to share with us in our broadcast on today. Know that something that's going to be said to enlighten your day. Now, come on, go with me and let's go into the sanctuary. When God allows something to come about like this, he always allows it to happen that he may get the glory. David, David, David flees to this, this place, Gat. He, he flees to this place, Gat. He goes to this place, Gat. He goes to the enemy camp. He, he's there in the midst of the enemy camp. And somebody found out and knew who David was. And then the Bible says that David began to play the fool. You know, everybody plays the fool sometimes. There are no exceptions to the rule. Everybody plays the fool. David began to slobbering from his mouth and acting like he was crazy because he knew what was about to happen. But David, in his shrewd self, mind found himself escaping to the cave of Adullam. Yeah, yeah, the term cave of Adullam has been used by political commentators referring to any small group remote from power but planning to return to power. Yeah, yeah, any small group that, 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 that leads from power but they're planning to return to power. St. Stephen's, you can identify with the cave of Adullam. 429 Newton Mount Pilgrim Baptist Church was a cave of Adula. 2701 Lawrence Street St. Julian Catholic Church was a cave of Adulam. 3518 General Maya St. Mary Place was a cave of Adulam. All I'm simply saying is if that if it was a little setback for a major comeback. Can I get somebody to pray with me up in here? Aren't you glad that you have to go through your cave of Abdullah? For it was at Abdullah when David recognized if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? And I think I got my three people up in this St. Stephen church who realized just like David, if it had not been for the Lord on your side, where would you be? Yeah, yeah, it was there at a dueling that David seen the presence. It was there at Abdullah, the plan and the power of God's deliverance was inedible to David. 400 of Israel's outcasts gathered 
um, with David, forming an army with him as, and made him as the leader. Yeah, while there, David wrote this psalm celebrating, yeah, the Lord's deliverance. Yeah, and I believe that every one of us have a reason to celebrate God's deliverance. Yeah, yeah. So David says to us on today, he said, I will bless the Lord at all times in his praises shall continually be in my mouth. He said, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. He said, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. <laughs> yeah, I want to drop off two things and, and then I'm going to leave you about this praise that, that David had. See, David was praising God. We praise God for what God has done. So if God ain't never done nothing for you up in here, then you ain't got no reason to praise him. But if God has done anything for you up in here on today, I want somebody to stand on their feet and holler. Has he been God? <laughs> My first thing, first thing that I see mm -hmm, about David praise. Um, after David had been through what he'd been through. The first thing I see about David praise is David praise is personal. Yeah, his praise is personal. He says, I will bless the Lord. Yeah, he says, I will bless the Lord. Now you probably sit inside somebody who looking like they've been sucking on a sour lemon because they don't know how good God has been to them. But their praise is not predicated on them. Your praise is predicated on how good God has been to you. And if God has been good to you, you ought to be able to say, I will bless the Lord. Yeah, yeah, I don't care if my mama prayed him. I don't care if my daddy prayed him. I got to give him some praise. It's personal. I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. It's personal. Yeah, it's personal. He says, I will bless the Lord. I notice that, um, yeah, you, you, you're dressed up in your beautiful clothes. And you're in your beautiful church. But don't get too beautiful. Don't get too pretty. Don't get too blessed till you can't praise the Lord. Because you got to remember everything that you have is all because God gave it to you. Everywhere that you've been is because God brought you. Everything that you know is because God taught you. Is it anybody in here got a personal praise? about my personal praise. Can I tell you something about my personal praise? See, see when I'm praying the Lord, it don't matter what my neighbor's doing. Yeah. Because they got some folk who come to church for different reasons. Yeah, some come to see. Some come to be. Some come to flee. And some come to be. Let me help you with that. Some people come to church to see what's going on. All they're going to do is spectate. They ain't going to get involved in nothing. They just want to see what's going on. Some other folk come to church to be. That's the one who can't be nothing. Nowhere else they go. Can't be nothing at your house. Can't be nothing on your job. But you come to church and rain all kind of hell because you can't be nothing nowhere else. But then there's those who come to flee. That's the ones who are looking at your watch the time I got up, trying to figure out what time I'm going to get out. But maybe if you got to leave, put up your holy finger and dance on out the door. Because we came here for the ones who came to D. I wish I had three folk up in here that came to D. You came to play them. And you ain't going to let him go until he bless you. It's personal. Yeah, it's personal. Yeah, it's personal. 
It's personal. It's personal. It's personal. It's personal. It's personal. I'm not ready for you yet, Doc. I'll let you know. It's personal. Mm -hmm. It's personal. My praise is personal. But not only is my praise personal, but my praise, uh, yeah, is perpetual. He says, I will bless the Lord. Not sometime. Y'all ain't gonna help me here. After the choir you get through singing, your praise die out. After the preacher get through hollering, your praise die out. But can I tell you something? I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. When you see me on Monday, I got my hands lifted up. When you see me on Tuesday, I got my hands lifted up. When you see me on Wednesday, I got my hands lifted up. You see me on Thursday, I got my hands lifted up. You see me on Friday, I got my hands lifted up. You see me on Saturday, I'm thinking about how good God did to me. So when I come up in the door, I ain't got to worry about nobody pumping me up because I'm already pumped up because I done thought about the goodness of Jesus. So I can enter into the gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. Yes, yes, and be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. Yes, uh, I have a continual praise. And the reason why I have a continual praise because it don't matter if God don't do nothing else for me. Y'all ain't gonna help me. He's already done enough. Yeah, he blessed me once. He, he blessed me twice. Yeah, he's already done enough for me to give him praise for a lifetime. Is there anybody in here? Let me just take a break. Let me get away from my sermon for a second. Is there anybody in here can praise the Lord? Praise is personal. I don't care how you look at me. I ain't worried about how you look at me. I'm gonna get mad when you pray. You ought to do an inspection when you come in the church. Before you sit down, you ought to inspect your area. What you mean, Pastor? You ought to look around and see if they got some folk who just like you. I don't want to set aside no folk in church got their arms full telling their neighbor it don't take all that. Looking at me funny because I'm, I'm in the spirit. Ain't nobody telling me uh, you need to hush up. Nobody can hear because you're making too much noise. Baby, you don't know all the hell that I've been through. I'm sorry, can I say hell in the new church? You, you, you don't know all the stuff that I have to deal with to make it to this place. And when I get to this place, yeah, all the gloves off because I come to praise and worship the one who made it possible. Yeah, the one who made a way out of no way. The one who turned my darkness in the day. I come to praise him. Yeah. <laughs> For the story that was told this old lady, she would make it to church every week. And every week she would make it to church, she would sit in the back. And as she sat in the back, um, every now and then she would strike a match and hold it up. 
Somebody saw this old lady striking a match and holding the match up. They went back and told the lady, they said, Ma'am, you can't light a fire up in the church. She said, well, she said, when I was young, she said, I used to stand up and holler. She said, but now I'm old. And because I'm old, I never seen the righteous forsaken. And I never seen his seed begging for bread. He said, in all these years, she said, the Lord has taken care of me. She said, so when I come in the church, I can't holler like I used to. She said, but there's the fire that's on the inside that still burns like it used to. She said, so I light a match because it's just like fire. Shut up in my bones. And she said, every time I light the match, it makes my fire feel a little better. And maybe if I light my match and my fire feel a little better, maybe it'll ignite some of these dead Negroes that's up in here and make their fire burn a little more. And then anybody here got fire, shut up in their bones. I'm cold. Let me close here. Um, David says his praise is personal. His praise is, yeah, perpetual. But lastly, uh, in verse 3, he says his praise is participatory. Uh, his praise is participatory. What you mean? He says, you and you and you and you can participate in my praise. He says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us rejoice the Lord together. He says, this is a together thing. And after I looked at the record, I'm about to go to my seat and I check the record. I see that St. Stephen's have a reason to give the Lord some praise. I see where St. Stephen's had went from church to church. I see where the Lord has continued to make a way for St. Stephen's. I see where the Lord has opened doors that were clothed in your face. And that's enough reason right there to give the Lord some praise. I dare you up in this place on this evening to look back over your life and see where the Lord has brought you from and when you look back over your life if he brought you from a mighty long way then you ought to stand on your feet and give the Lord some praise and then anybody here will praise the Lord maybe you don't have a reason to give the Lord some praise but can I give you one of my ten reasons to praise the Lord I pray the Lord because he woke me up this morning. I pray the Lord because he woke me up this morning. I pray the Lord because he woke me up this morning. I pray the Lord because he woke me up this morning. And the psalmist said that everything that had bread praise the Lord. And did anybody here will help me to magnify the Lord. Well, why you magnify him? Can I tell you why I magnify him? He had nails put in his hand. He had spies put in his feet. He died. Didn't he die? He died till the earth rocked in real. He died till the moon dripped in blood. Didn't he die? But, but early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hand 
Is it anybody here can praise my Jesus? Is it anybody here can praise my Lord? Say it. Yeah. Yeah. Where you pray them, where you pray them, where you pray them, where you pray them, where you pray them. Ow! I'm so excited after hearing the word of God on this morning. Now let us be about our father's business and tell somebody else about the good news of Jesus. I hope to see you at the same time on the same channel on next week. See you there. Hey, I'm Pastor Joe Barry Garcia of First Zion Baptist Church and the moderator of the Liberty Missionary Baptist and Education Association. I'm standing today with the president of the Cornerstone Missionary Baptist General Association, Dr. Reginald Nicholas. He's also the pastor of the Olive Branch uh, Baptist Church and uh, pastor of the Ray Avenue Baptist Church, Pastor Robert Brown Sr. We are on today, we are about to uh, bring water over to Flint, Michigan to share with them in their time of need. So many have contributed to uh, this, this effort. Uh, First District Association, Dr. Calvin Woods, uh, the West Side Association, Dr. Joseph Hampton, uh, the West New Orleans Association, uh, Dr. Uh, Lawrence Sear, and the Louisiana Home and Foreign Mission Baptist State Convention, uh, Dr. Mallory Callahan. So many have contributed uh, to this effort, and on today, we're about to bring the water over uh, to Flint, Michigan. On today, I want to ask that uh, Dr. Nicholas will pray uh, uh, for the water, and we're going to ask Dr. Brown to pray for the city of Flint. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we do come to you this hour of the day to tell you thank you right now for another day. We come thank you, Lord, for those that have heard the cry that came from different moderators and pastors and have contributed to bring water. And now, Lord, we ask the blessing upon this water as those that are in Flint, Michigan, will receive the water, that they will know there are people from across the state and others that have heard their cry concern and were able to help. This we ask in the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, uh, we also lift up the city of Michigan and Florida. God, we pray that you will bless everyone that live in that city. And God, we lift up those ministries. God, we pray that you will continue to restore them and those pastors, and they will continue to be able to minister to the people of that region to bring glory to your name. This we ask in Jesus' name. I want to say also that this was a collaborative effort of so many associations in our city that came together and, and they're doing uh, the mission work and we pray that what has been done on this week, the people of Flint, Michigan will benefit and be made the better. God bless you now. We thank you for your support and partnership. For a copy of today's message or to become a covenant partner, Call us at area code 504-517-3922. Make it a point to visit us on Sunday service at 730 Early Morning at 2200 Jackson Avenue and 930 at 7201 Olive Street. Thanks again for your support and we look forward to seeing you next week.